Hey y'all, so it's me Amanda and today I'm going to talk about books I read in August. So as you can see I am slowly catching up with the months that I missed. So first let's start with Ink Blood Sister Scribe by Emma Tours. I should mention I August was not a good reading month for me. I he was a little down in the dumps and I and I had my I was around my kids all the time. It was hard to read. But anyway, so I started with this one from Book of the Month. I went for this one because it's fantasy. I, it is what I think would be considered low fantasy because it takes place in our world, but there's magic. And the magic in this book is basically a kind where there are specific people who can write with their blood and they can make up spells. And there's other people who can sense this magic and read it and actually like use it. The people who write the spells can't really use it, but other people can. And then other people don't have any kind of magic whatsoever, I think, is how this goes. This one is about two sisters. There's Esther, es Esther, Esther, who has to stay away from home. We learn why, but this hurts the other sister, Joanna, who does stay at home and she is kind of like in charge of their now deceased father's library of magical books. We we soon find that Esther is in danger. Sorry, I'm saying her name so weird. For some reason I just cannot say that name right now. We find out that she's in danger and that is why she stays away from home and from her sister and they're so estranged. And it, you end up learning all about this magical world and you find out that Esther has a very unique ability and unfortunately it puts her in danger of somebody else. And you, you also have another character, Nicholas, who is a highfalutin British young gentleman. Um, and he comes into the mix as well because he... It, his uncle also collects these magical books and whatnot. Okay, so, you know, you've got a whole bunch of characters. And what's... This one I felt was really, really slow. So, like I said, I was very slumpy for August. Um, now, I, I took a long time to read this book. I think that, honestly, a good 80% of it was just me... Me. The other 20% was this book is really slow to get going. I just thought it was a little... Mm. But then once characters start meeting up and things start getting sending into motion, I thought it was really fun. And I really enjoyed it. So all around, I really liked the characters in this. At first, individually, I liked them fine. But once they start really interacting with each other I really started to like them a lot like I thought they were really fun and I liked the interactions and I thought it was really entertaining so I ended up giving this one 3.75 stars um, because of that slow intro into it but enjoyed it after that so I would recommend it the next book I read was people we meet on vacation by Emily Henry so I started off with Book Lovers, which I read in July, and then I was like, I knew people we meet on vacation would be a good choice for like a summer read, right? It just seemed perfect. This one is a romance and it's about Alex and Poppy. They are good pals and they're very different people. Poppy is very like, her fashion is very like bright colorful and she's very like out there and Alex is a more reserved kind of a guy but they become friends one day um, after a road trip which I just realized is a little bit when Harry met Sally they they become friends and then every summer they go on a vacation together and they go all over the world and oftentimes they have a very limited budget they're young they become better and better friends, but then something happens. We don't get to find out for quite a while. And unfortunately, they aren't friends anymore. Um, Poppy is in a situation where she wants to do, um, to go on a certain vacation for work. And she wants to try to reconnect with Alex. And so she takes this opportunity 
to go on one more vacation with him. But the tension is weird between them. We're like, what's going on? Anyway, this is a great example of friends to lovers done right, in my opinion. I just, ooh, I felt it for this book. I love longing, and there was so much longing. Um, it's all from Poppy's point of view, so we don't really know what's going on with Alex for quite a while. But Poppy is just, like, tortured over this man. And it's, like, torturing me just reading about how much she's, like, crazy about him. And feeling her pain and wow it was very intense and I really thoroughly enjoyed it. I gave this one five stars like I loved it that much. I got really into it so do recommend. Then after that I read The Farthest Shore by Ursula K. Le Guin and this one is uh, the third book in the Earthsea trilogy although again there's more books now. Basic premise is that magic is kind of disappearing. People who are wizards are forgetting magic so there's this young gentleman who informs Sparrowhawk slash Judd about the situation and they go to investigate together. It's just not my thing. I, I feel so bad about it, but Earthsea is just not my thing as a whole. Now, I just find it very... I don't get into it, we'll just say. Now, there were certain aspects that I really did like about this book. I liked seeing some of the other cultures in this world. There's one culture in particular that I really enjoyed, which is these people who live almost all the time on boats and they like will hook up their rafts and they have like a whole seasonal thing that they do. I really enjoyed it. Enjoyed that. And there's other piece, bits and pieces. And we have some cool stuff with dragons in here. I love dragons. I'm always up for more dragons. I don't know. It's just something about this series. It just isn't for me. And I feel bad about it, but I'm done basically. I don't have any more of these books. I'm not going to acquire more of these books. This is it. I did it. I gave it 3.25 stars. And then after that, I read Clockwork Boys by T. Kingfisher, which, mm, I love T. Kingfisher. I love her characters. They are so vivid and bright and entertaining. This one um, centers around a group of we'll say to start four characters who are on this mission. They need to go to another city that they are, their city is at war with and they need to figure out how to dismantle these things called clockwork boys. And they're just like basic weirdo killing machine things. And there's, it's very hard to destroy them and they are going to lose this war unless something is done about these clockwork boys. So that is their mission. We've got Slate, who is a master forger, as in, you know, forgery. And we have Brenner, who is an assassin. We have Caliban, who is a paladin, but a disgraced one because he became possessed by a demon and killed several innocent people. And learned Edmund, who is this, like, priest for, um, like the multi-armed god, I guess you could say, and he's like really, really smart and clever, <laughs> but he uh, is very prejudiced against women. Anyway, the whole thing is a riot. It's really fun. It's bigger stakes than uh, Sword Heart, which takes place in the same world, but Clockworks Boys is before that, but just thoroughly enjoyed it. This is a duology, so there is a second book, and I read that one too. But yeah, I gave it four and a half stars. Loved it. Next I read Hello Stranger by Catherine Center because it was, you know, another book of the month. This one, um, the basic concept is we've got a character named Sadie. Sadie um, is a portrait artist and she gets into like the top 10 of this big contest and she could win like $10,000 if she wins this contest. Well then, Sadie has an accident and she like falls into the street and it turns out she has something going on with her brain and she needs to have brain surgery. She does and then after her brain surgery she goes face blind which when you're a portrait artist that is pretty horrible. In the meantime she's interested in two different men her dog's veterinarian and a man who lives in her building that she calls Joe. Okay 
It's a romance. The thing about this book, that's a great premise, I have to say. I think it's super fun, interesting. I couldn't stand Sadie. I just could not stand her. She was very, she just got on my last nerve. She was not, not for me. I'll try to explain as best as I can. She's very self-centered and like, I get it. Her life, she's very self-centered and very woe is me. She She's going through stuff and I feel, I genuinely feel sympathy for this character, but just the way she is, she's very like, she doesn't seem to think too much of other people. And a lot of this book is centered on the premise of miscommunication, which I don't mind me some miscommunication, okay? I'm willing to overlook it. I can forgive it. But like, this book is ridiculous ridiculous with it. Ridiculous. And it just, it pushes the boundaries of like, oh, come on, you've got to be kidding me. It's that ridiculous. So I just didn't really feel it. Like, um, our two male love interests, Dr. Addison, we barely see him. He's not anything particularly interesting. And Joe is a really nice guy and I actually rather liked him, but he was also just sort of not fleshed out enough. I think there's a lack of nice guys in romance novels for sure, but I also think that unfortunately the nice guys I do see oftentimes end up being just kind of dull and not very fleshed out. So yeah, overall, it just was a disappointment. But yeah, most of it was Sadie, because she just... I'm trying to think of how to explain it, but like, she she was a character who was very caustic to people for no good reason. And a lot of it was that, and this was very much emphasized in the book, is that she really was trying not to rely on other people. Okay, fair enough. But it, it got to a point where it was absolutely ridiculous how much she tried to not rely on other people and how just unfriendly she would be because of it. So I just, like I said, I lost my ability to empathize with her after a point, you know? Okay, I think that's all I'll say about this one. I gave it, I think, just two and a half stars. Um, unfortunately, this is my first book of the month stinker. And then the last book I read was Emil uh, Meant to Be by Emily Griffin. So this one I borrowed from a friend. I don't have it anymore. This one is about two characters, Joe and Kate. Now, it takes place... It, it's basically... It's, it's kind of weird because it's basically the love story between actual um, JFK Jr., and uh, was it Caroline it was her name? I forget her last name, but it's their romance, but like fictionalized. And, you know, obviously lots of details are changed, I'm sure. I don't know a whole lot about their romance personally, but that's basically what this is, is their love story told through two fictional characters. I read it because my friend liked it and, you know, seemed like a good end of the summer read. How would I describe it? I would describe it like re-eating a sleeve of Ritz crackers. Not the worst experience. Ritz crackers are pretty tasty, but they're not that interesting if you just eat them by themselves. And it was, it was fine. It just, you know, it wasn't bad or anything. It just wasn't that interesting. There's, there's better romance is out there. I give this one three stars. This is an exact example of a three star book. I felt the dialogue was pretty not interesting, <laughs> unfortunately, but overall I still enjoyed it. It wasn't bad. Um, it was just very meh. Yeah, that's it. Didn't read a whole lot, unfortunately, in August, but September so far is going a lot better. And yeah, hope you're all doing well. Bye.